Hello everyone. We're going to try my um, introduction to music theory and songwriting. So I've got the piano. I'm going to use the piano because the piano is completely visual. I can see everything that I'm doing. Um, at this point you might want to grab a pen and paper because there are a few numbers. The numbers get a little bit confusing. Um, so now's a good time. Okay, a C major scale. I'm going to use a C major scale on the piano because there are no sharps or flats in it. There are no black notes in it. So everything it takes place on the on the white notes. Now, do re mi fa so la ti do is the major scale, an octave, and we know that because it just follows from C to C. So there they are. So they're all numbered. One to eight. Okay. So those numbers, like I say, will get a little bit confusing. And they'll, but we'll, we'll do, do our best. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, if I can, understand the code of that scale. And what I mean by that is how it is made up, okay? Like I say, it's just from the white notes to the white notes, but there's actually something going on. There's this intervals, which is a musical word. So this distance here is what we call a tone. Because when I travel from C to C sharp, that's a semitone, and when I travel another C sharp to D, that's a tone. So I've traveled a tone to get to D. So the pattern goes tone, it's another tone to get to E. Now between E and F, there's no black notes. This is a semitone. Whenever I travel to the next note, the next consecutive note, chromatic note, it's a semitone. So my pattern, there's my, my start note, I've traveled a tone, a tone, a semitone, then to get to G, I travel a tone, A is a tone, G is a tone, B, sorry, get my notes right, is a tone, and there's another semitone to get to my eighth note, my octave, my C. So my pattern goes, I start, my start note, I've traveled a tone, a tone, a semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So if you want to write that down, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And so why that is important is because every single major scale will follow that code. Okay, so if I start just on D and I travel a tone, there's a semitone, there's a semitone, so that's a tone. Tone, tone, well that's a semitone, so that's no good to me. So that's the tone. Okay, tone, tone, semitone. There's my semitone. Tone, tone, tone gets me a C sharp for the semitone. For the clues, obviously I always have to arrive back at where I started. So a D major scale. I know it's right because it sounds like do re mi fa so la da ti do. I can hear that in my head. But it's following the same code. So I can start anywhere on the piano and follow that code. And then I can start anywhere on a guitar or any fretted instrument and follow the same code because the frets on a guitar, a mandolin, a bass guitar are all a semitone. They're all marked out in semitones. So as long as I can see where the, the frets are, it doesn't matter what tune it's in, as long as I, I follow that pattern, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, I will get a major scale. It's, it's worth adding straight away that this is not a law or a rule. I don't know what you call it, a guideline, I suppose. And because it's an art form, music's an art form, you know, of course we can break these guidelines. Of course we can do other things. We can express ourselves how we like. So we're going to use that as a guideline, okay? Our C major scale. So, I can work out any major scale on a fretted instrument or any major scale on a piano using that code. Now, we're going to start giving them all numbers. Like I say, hopefully, obviously, it's one to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the two collections of numbers I want to talk about are one, three, and five. 
because they give me triads and that's how I make chords. A chord is just two or more notes played together, that's the definition of a chord. Those are all chords, but I'm going to play triads, okay? So if I take the first, the third and the fifth of the scale, I get a triad. So one, two, three, four, five. That is a triad of C major, a chord of C major. Because I'm following the C major scale, the next place I'm going to start is D. Now this is where the numbers become a bit inadequate. This is going to become number one. It is number two in the C major scale, yes. But for my triad, it becomes number one. I have to follow the white notes because I'm in C major, the key of C major. So my triad becomes that. And in C, I hope it's obvious because if I just glued my hand in that position, all the triads would follow that exact pattern. So C major is my first triad. So this is D minor. So I talked about intervals. The reason this becomes D minor is because the distance between this note and this note is a tone and a half. That's a tone and that's a half. Why this why this chord is C major is because the distance between this note and this note is two tones. And that is the rule for major and minor chords. It's the distance between the third, the first and the third note. So we call it flattening the third. If I play C major, that's the third note. If I flatten it by semitone, that's the chord of C minor. Again, I can visualize it on the piano, it makes real sense to me. Another musical word you've heard is arpeggio. So this is the arpeggio. Just when you roll the note, roll the chord. C major, that would be C minor. So, note one gives me a major chord of C. Note two gives me a minor chord of D, D minor. The third note gives me E, so I have to follow the rules. They all have to be white notes, and I follow my rule about just shape. I have to keep the shape. So this is a minor. I know it's a minor because the distance between the first and the third note is a tone and a half. That's a tone, that's a semitone. That's one tone and a half. Now, because you're musical, you can probably hear this chord. It resolves, it sounds more homely. So that's a major chord. Again, the, the science of that is the distance between the first and the third note is two tones. That's a tone, that's a tone. G. I have to follow the white notes, I have to follow them all, I have to follow my pattern, is a major, G major. A, again I have to follow the white notes, is minor, the distance between here and here is a minor third, a tone, a semitone, a tone and a half makes it a minor chord. This is the, the crazy weird one. This is a minor, that distance there is a tone and a half, so that makes that a minor. But this note is the only time in the scale where the fifth note becomes flattened. And I'm not going to talk too much about that, but again, you have to follow the rules of C major. So it has to be white notes. I have to follow my play one, miss one sort of rule because of the white notes. And that becomes B minor, flattened fifth. So that is how a major scale turns into chords. The next, so the numbers there are one, three, and five. The next numbers I'm going to talk about are one, four, and five. So this is to do with chords, not to do with the notes. The chord one has to be C because we're in the key of C. It's C major. Chord number four, one, two, three, four. So 
So my one, three, and five, this now becomes note one of this chord. One, two, three, four, five. I'm following the path of C major. So one, three, and five. But the chord is what we call chord four because it's the fourth place. One, two, three, four. That's major as well. And chord five is G, and that's G major as well. In every single major key, chord one, four, and five are major chords. Doesn't matter what key I start in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is E flat. Okay, so I'm gonna follow my my code. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And I get my scale. So if I follow that, one two, three, four, five, that's my triad, so that's chord one, one, two, three, four, that's much more confusing, sorry, this is the fourth chord, there's my triad, and my chord five, uh. okay, so every key works that way, one, four, and five, are the three major chords in any key. So one, three, and five make the triads. One, four, and five are the three major chords. So just while I'm on the piano, I'm gonna talk about this very quickly. In the C chord, I'm obviously playing C, E, and G. So I could just as easily start on the E note and play the same three notes, and that's still a C chord. Okay, it's like making a cherry and apple pie and putting the cherries in first one day and the apples in second another day. And another day you put the apples and the cherries in in a different order. It's still exactly the same ingredients, just played in a different order. And they're called inversions. So you can play a chord on the piano with the three notes in any order you like. When we start off, we always put the root note at the bottom. It just makes more sense. So the reason these three chords are incredibly important is because that every note that I can play in the scale of C belongs in one of those chords. So if I play a C major chord in my left hand, and I play, I'm gonna play the scale. So, this D note doesn't belong in a C chord. There it is. It doesn't belong there. It doesn't belong in the F chord, which is the four. One, two, three, four, F. So here's the F chord in my left hand. And D doesn't belong in it, so it's not going to harmonize naturally with it. But it does, however, belong in the G chord. So I'm going to play C. And I play the D note with the G chord. The E only belongs in the C chord, it doesn't belong in F, there's F, there's no E note in it, and there's G and there's no E note in it. So I have to, I have to, but I'm going to play the E, the C chord to harmonize with the E note. F only belongs in the F chord. G is good because it belongs to a C chord and a G chord. There is G, it's the fifth note of a C chord and the first note of a G chord. So here we go, C, D with the G chord, E the C chord, F has to be an F chord, G I'm going to play a C chord, A only belongs, doesn't belong in C, it does belong in F, there it is, the third note. There's the G, sorry, there's the B note, and the B only belongs in a G chord. There's no B in a C chord. There's no B in an F chord. It only belongs there. And my C does belong in an F. It does belong in a C. C with a C. D with a G chord. E with a C chord. F with an F chord, G 
B with a C chord, F, B with a G chord, and I'm going to be playing F chord. When I think of music, I want to keep my life simple. I want to think of two main ingredients, uh, of pitch and rhythm. Um, obviously we have dynamics and rhythm and harmony and tempo and all those things and they're incredibly important but just to get us started off I want to just think about those two things and the way I always explain it is like a picture if I paint some some sheep in, a, in the foreground and paint some hills in the background that makes sense to me but if I had them on slides if the, if the hills were on a slide and I took the slide out and put a cityscape in then suddenly the picture completely changes. The sheep are now standing in a city, and that, that's not right. It's, it's incongruous. It's not what I'm expecting. Or if I put a, a moonscape in, again, these sheep suddenly a challenge. And that's really what's going on in music. I have melodies, and I can, if I, these are my sheep, and this is my field, it all makes sense. start cheating and putting strange chords in there and I can change my background and completely change the picture. There you get the point. So that's really important. That's one of the important things about how music is working. Okay, so just think about those two things. Think about a tongue that has five basic flavors but food is so different you know the, the amount of salt or sugar or bitterness you put into your food the ingredients completely changes the concept of what you're of what you're eating so with these eight simple notes obviously i can write a, a, a thousand a million songs with a different rhythm and a different pitch um so let's, let's have a, a quick look so i've played you a major scale um I'm going to do this live, so I'm going to make lots of mistakes. If I take some really simple ideas um, about how songs are written and show you what's going on with a, with a, with some notes here. So if I take Fairy Jacko, Nursery Rhyme, I'm going to play a C chord, a G chord, and a C chord. And my rhythm is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's the C chord, so I'm going to put a C note in it. There's the G chord, so I'm going to put a D note. And there's the third of the C. So I'm going to go back to the C chord. Now this is really interesting. So I've just played E, F, and G. E belongs in the C chord. F doesn't belong in the triad of G. What it does do is make a chord called G7. Okay, so don't worry about that. It's just an exception for now. C, then there's G, which does belong in the C chord. So the very basic rule here is that where I start As I'm hitting the chord, the pulse, one and two, oh, sorry, one and two and, so as I'm hitting the one, two, three, then the notes resonate with the chords. There's the G with the G chord, there's the E with the E chord. So I am passing through melodies and making melody, but as I land on each chord, the note harmonizes naturally with the chord. There's a C with a C chord, there's a G with a G chord. 
with that, it just follows the chords. So it's three blind mice. They're identical. It's just doing the opposite. Farrah Jekyll, three blind mice. So there's the third note of the C chord. seven again so g7 is going to be really important the seven chords are going to be important but we won't focus too much again the melody speeded up there's lots of things going on there c so as i land on the b it resonates with the g chord there's the c resonating with the c chord because it just res resolves and that's why you can sing rounds to those songs because someone can sing part one or someone sings part two so London Bridge is burning down because the chord pattern is cyclical it's going round and round and round and then I'm we we'll talked about my foregrounds and my backgrounds I am having three foregrounds to the same background because they all harmonize at the same time um, other songs I've written down so American Pie this is the chorus so there's the fifth note of the C chord so for my rule I'm going to use a G chord because the D doesn't belong to uh, an F chord it doesn't belong to a C chord, so there it is. And it goes to a minor chord. See, and this will be the day. Um, happy birthday. I'm gonna try and get this right now. No. Okay, that's good. So that's a good example of starting to cheat straight away. As I hit the C chord, I've now broken a rule. I'm not playing a note that's in key. So that gives me tension. Again, dissonance, ten tension, they're all part of music. So there's a good little thing. If you're composing a song, yes, I have a rule. I have a rule that I really want to stick to a note that's in harmony with the chord. So there we go, I've broken my rule. Resolved there, so there's my. I get my my payoff. So I'm playing a G chord, a B note in a G chord. And as I resolve, as I hit the beat, I'm playing a C note with a C chord. Now there you go. That's an arpeggio for you. So I've just played the melody of a C chord. Beautiful dissonance. So I'm playing a fourth note of an F chord. Okay, so it's not in harmony. But the, the resolves are there. So it sits back. There's the D. It belongs to a G chord. Obviously, I can play these in any key. Once I know the code of what's going on, so I, I, I can name what these notes, what numbers they are in the scale, and it just gets displaced. And the way I think about it, it's like languages. If someone comes in and speaks French, everyone knows we're going to speak French today. So we all say the same things. Hello, how are you? You know, what are you having for lunch? We just say it in French instead of English. So that's what keys are. So if I play Happy Birthday in a key, see Happy Birthday to you. 
Oh, someone says that's too high or too low for me, so we play it in a different key. I don't know, uh, E flat. <laughs> One chord, my five chord, my five chord, and my one chord. Uh, what other else do I have? So, sweet child of mine. So this is good because it's starting on the fifth chord of the of the sequence. Okay. That's C, that could belong to a C chord, but in this case it belongs to an F chord. So all the time, any note I want, the whole point of this, any note I want in the scale can be played in any of those three major chords. So those three simple major chords, the one, the four, and the five, cover every single note. I've gone out of my, out my rule there, but that's good to see that. So everything I wanted, I can find in there. So there we go. There's the F chord. So those two notes both belong to the F chord. There's the whole C chord. F. There's the G, which belongs to C chord. And there's the... I'm going to cheat. The G for the, the cadence that gives me tension to bring me back home. So, two challenges write a chord sequence and stick a melody to it, write a melody, whatever that wants to be, keep it all to a major scale, and then stick um, a chord sequence to it. So, I'm going to write a chord sequence in my left hand and my rule what I want to try and do is make sure I land on one of the, the key tones of each chord on beat one so one two three four one two three four one two three four one so just to try and make my life really simple so on beat one I'm going to land one two three four try and expand on that so I'm going to improvise now I'm going to play around with these ideas but I'm always going to use it as a guide to try and land on one of my guide tones whilst the chord lands one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three writing a melody based on my chord sequence. So my chord sequence is dictating how my melody goes. And that's a good way to write a song. It's a good way to practice, okay? Um, if I'm not that sort of musician, I just play a melody. And when I'm writing a melody, I'm looking to tell a story, okay? When I'm improvising, and what I'm playing with, I'm playing with a lot of rhythm, and phrases, so we, we know a lot about blues. And we 
because we learn these scales and we do that sort of thing, we learn how to play phrases. So when I'm going to write a melody based tune, I'm trying to tell a story. So think about something like when the saints go marching in, I can hear da 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 da, I can hear the story being told. So I'm going to steal that idea of when the saints go marching in. Obviously, I know it's not the right tune. see how we get on with this sort of improvises. So I'm going to land on the, the beat one, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. So I'm writing this melody in my head as I go. There's the, the E, and four, and one, so that's my C chord. differences there is what is leading what so obviously these are really basic things I'm trying to do I'm writing a melody I'm singing a tune I'm singing it from my head or from my heart and then I'm working out wherever I land whatever the beat is what chord belongs to that that part again really simple four four uh, and three chords I can use lots of different chords I can voice it in completely different ways but I'm just trying to keep it really simple so another one um, da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. So it's going to be a C or an F. C chord with the C note, it, it goes, it resolves, it goes home. If I land on the F chord, it doesn't, it sustains. And then it wants to go. 